Well, guys, once again, our study is from Luke chapter 9 and chapter 10. Grab your Bibles. Let's go there. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. And uh, once again, we find out that Jesus calls his disciples and he sends them out two by two. And he tells them specifically what to do. We're always asking, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Well, here he tells us. He says, go and preach that the kingdom of God is at hand. Go lay hands on the sick. Go cast out demons. <laughs> uh, that's, that should be more than enough for us to do. But then we also found out, he said, and raise the dead. See, in Jesus' name, uh, the, the Bible tells us in 1 John, it says, Greater is he that's in us. This is 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? It's him in me doing all these things. He tells us in John chapter 14, verse 12, I tell you these things that in uh, the things that I do, you shall do also and greater work shall you do because you go to be with the Father. And yet yesterday we found out they had gone out, they had done these things, they had experienced the power of the anointing working on them, and the next thing you know, they're arguing about over who's the greatest. <laughs> kind of sounds like us in the church right and we need to realize it has nothing to do with us we can't do these things it's him in us doing them so it should humble us tremendously to know look at what god is doing through me who is nothing amen well let's uh let's continue here because they're arguing over who's the greatest now we're going to go to verse 49 and we find out it says um uh, John says to Jesus, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to them, Do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. In other words, this shows, look at it, it's not about you. It's about the name of Jesus Christ. This man was casting out demons in the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus that does it, not you and I. And so again, here's a great shepherd. Here is the, the, the master teaching the disciples again. They've experienced the anointing. They've seen it happen through them. And yet here they are kind of off trap, track again. And he goes and loves them back on and says, listen, guys, let's get this right. Okay. And then we see the next thing, you know, uh, he uh, is going to go into a Samaritan village um, but they reject him because he won't stay and teach. And so his disciples, this is what his disciples, because they say, don't come through Samar Samar uh, Samaria. And so uh, we find in uh, uh, verse 54, and when his disciples, James and John, saw that this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire uh, to come down from the heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So, now every other time up to this point, the mistakes that they made, Jesus gently, lovingly corrected them. But here it said he rebuked them. Why? Because it, he says, you don't know what spirit you're of. See, that's a proudful spirit. Once we've experienced the anointing flowing in us and we see the signs and wonders, sometimes we get pumped up thinking it's us and it's not us. Once again, that should humble us to know that God would use me, an imperfect person, to fulfill his perfect will. That's amazing. That should humble us, not get us all pumped up. Amen? Well, now we go on to the cost of discipleship. It says, now it happened, this is verse 57, happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the airs have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now I'm going to take just a moment to teach this. I'm running out of time, but listen to me very closely. Because many people say, see, there it is telling us that Jesus didn't have anything. Well, that's not true. How do I know that? Well, foxes um, don't live in holes. And birds do not live in nests. Remember it says foxes have holes and birds have a nest? That doesn't mean that's where they live. But those places, the hole for the fox and the nest for the bird, is where they give birth to their young. 
And so here Jesus is saying, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. In other words, see, he has not gone to heaven yet. He has not ascended into heaven. And so the church has not come yet. And he's saying, I have no place to birth my own. I have no place for the church to be birthed yet. That's what he was saying. How do I know that? Again, it says that the Son of Man has nowhere. He didn't say the Son of God. He says the Son of Man, his humanity, has no place to birth uh, the church yet. But then we know that when he ascended into heaven, guess what happened? The church was birthed. Amen. So here that's what it's saying. It's saying that foxes have a place to give birth. Birds have a place to give birth. But I have not had a place to give birth to my headship. Remember it says it right there. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his headship. Got that? Okay, so now I say all that because you and I need to know that now the church has been birthed. And it's birthed in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. And he's given us power and authority to do what he did. What would Jesus do? Let's do it. Amen. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.